Hey everyone, I wanted to take a moment to talk about the health of our connect groups, not because they're in terrible shape, but just because the health of our church depends actually on the health of our connect groups. Um, if our connect groups are healthy, our church is going to be healthy. In terms of health of a connect group, here are three things that I think a connect group is, has to constantly grow in and develop in. One is the connection between the people amongst each other, Con people connecting to people. The other one is people connecting to God together. And the third one is people connecting to the outside, to outside people. In terms of people connecting to each other, for me, I think the biggest one is, is there trust? Is there openness? How big uh, is, is the trust factor in, in, in a connect group? And you can increase the trust factor in your connect group simply by creating a safe environment where people know that they can be themselves because you are yourself and you don't pretend anything. Connect group has to be the place where no masks are, are put on and people can just be themselves. Of course, it can be a, a pity party. It can turn into a pity party if it's just that. And this is why we need the other twos as well. Um, but, it, but it has to be the place where people can come as they are. Sometimes I ask people, how are you? And then they tell me what they're doing. And then you have to add, ask again, yes, but how are you? Or, and, and you have to sometimes drill deeper until they understand you actually care. And it's not you lurking for a problem or it's l looking for what can you fix in someone. This is not psychotherapy. This is a place where people, friends, actually connect to each other and really show who they really are. If, if that is the bottom line, then that's actually a great, great place to start. Because the second thing is you have to add a layer of faith. Everything should be expected of a, of a connect group evening. God has to move in a connect group evening. Not because we do the right prayers or anything, but because God wants to move. Um, if we read the Bible, let's read it as it is true. If we pray, let's pray expecting that God would move. Don't place prayer at the end of Connect Group. Make sure it is it is right in the middle. It's it's the key moment where people actually come for this. They they yes they like the tea. Yes they like the the chat. Yes they like the honesty. But if you, you don't have that God moment, then the heart is gone. Make sure the heart is not at the end. Place it more to the to the front. That means that you have to have a, a prayer life. That means that you have to have a scripture life. And that is a challenge. I know that. Because it's not just about reading a bit and it's just not just about praying a bit. It's actually about connecting to God yourself. But once you're connected to God, you have something to give. You have something to read. You have something to share. You can use my, my emails, but you can go some do something else if, if you know that's the right thing. Thirdly, there needs to be a connection to the outside. If connect groups just exist for themselves, um, it, it somehow affects the health. Somehow it doesn't go anywhere. And, and that, that can become a, a real problem. I've seen ch whole churches that just become centered around themselves. And it's a nightmare. Honestly, it's, it's, it's really, really sad. So as a connect group, Start to talk about, if you haven't yet, who can we invite? How? What would be a person that would fit? Or who do you know who could profit from this connect group? Um, and, and state it again and again. This connect group doesn't just exist for us. We exist for others as well. What could we do? And then if, if you balance these three things, place of vulnerability and connection to each other, a place of faith and God connection where God can move. Thirdly, a place that actually reaches out to other people. I, I just know our church is going to be so healthy, not because we do all the right things, but because God leads us. Let me pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you lead us the way. And this might be a nice, tiny little concept, but it's often so murky and complicated. 
I pray that you would lead us and you would help us because we need you, God. Thank you for wisdom in this week. I pray for growth in all three areas. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.